Welcome everyone. And thank you for joining us to learn about the Lenape Regional High School District bond referendum, which is included on the November 2nd general election ballot. I'm Matt Webb, Assistant Superintendent of Schools and the moderator for tonight's virtual community forum. Now let's meet our panelists for this evening's virtual community forum, who will review the financial benefits of funding projects through a bond referendum, as well as a list of proposed projects and how they will benefit students, staff, and the LRHSD communities. We have Dr. Birnbaum, Superintendent of Schools, Connie Stewart, Business Administrator, Heather Zanakis, Director of Curriculum and Instruction, Tony Vora, Director of Buildings and Grounds, and Mrs. Donna Charlesworth, Cherokee Principal. Now, other important people tonight are the ones who are watching this via YouTube live stream. Here's how they can submit questions for the panelists. Visit lrhsd.org slash forum question. That will be along the bottom of the screen throughout the forum. Complete the form so we know which panelists will get that question. Listen for the full hour because we're going to try to group the questions by topic. That form asks for an email address so we can send you an answer in the event we don't have time to get to your question tonight during our one hour forum. Now this form is gonna be a great way for our community to learn more about this bond referendum. Now, Dr. Birnbaum will introduce our Board of Education. Thank you, Mr. Webb, and good evening. And it is um, our pleasure to be here to talk about the exciting things that are in our bond referendum. And of course, supporting us in the wings are our 11 members of the Board of Education and um, more specifically, the ones that represent Evesham Township, um, who I know are listening in. They're very eager to hear what our public has to say about the bond referendum are Mrs. Bonnie Olt and our board president, Mr. Barry Fitzgerald. Um, so they will be listening and, and um, they're very supportive of this, of this bond referendum. You may have seen them around at some of our events as we've been trying to market this bond referendum to as many people as possible. This forum, is just one way that we are getting the word out to the public about everything that's in here. It started last spring when we gathered um, a, a people, a group of people from all four of our high schools. We had parents, we had staff members, and of course students, because we really value student voice here. They were our communications committee, and they really helped shape the messaging that we've been doing since last spring. And we've just recently just turned up the heat as we get closer to the election. Uh, since last spring, every board meeting, we've been updating the public on all the exciting news as we've been learning about uh, the state aid that we're getting or the low rates for our bonds. Um, we've been at parent faculty meetings, PTO meetings, PTA meetings in our sending districts. Uh, you may have seen our students and our staff at two Marlton festivals on Main Street, um, just handing out flyers and trying to let everybody know about this bond referendum. Uh, you may hear announcements at football games and, and watch our videos at, in the snack stand as you're, as you're waiting in line for a snack. Uh, it is our job to make sure that all of our constituents in our towns, um, which is why we sent a mailer out to everybody in the eight townships, um, is, it's our job to get the word out about it. And we're here to answer your questions and we're really excited for your participation tonight. So thank you for being here. Thank you, Dr. Birnbaum. As a reminder to our community, if you have a question for any of these administrators tonight, visit lrhsd.org slash forum question. Now we received a few questions from citizens during last night's forum, and we'll repeat those questions as well for tonight's forum. Now first, a little overview. Let's briefly answer, what is a bond referendum? Well, it's a vote to approve the sale of bonds. School districts can sell bonds to generate funding and then buy them back with interest over time. It's similar to a home equity loan to make improvements and pay that loan back over the years. The timing is just right now for us because we're approaching the payoff point of a previous bond and we will be getting over a third of the cost of our projects in state aid. So we can update and enhance all of our schools with zero change to the tax rate. Dr. Birnbaum and Mrs. Stewart, how do we get to this point where Lenape Regional has a board proposal 
or bond proposal on the November 2nd ballot. Well, Mr. Webb, over the last several years, we have been working on our long range facility plan. And this plan identifies future facility needs so that they can be addressed str strategically. Yeah, and in addition to the long range facilities plan, a few years ago, we engaged all of our community members through our strategic planning process where we had about 400 people show up to our three hour long evening meetings um, in person. And we had over a thousand people respond to our survey and two consistent themes came up in all of those meetings, which is um, our faculty and our students want air conditioning and they want more choices for career pathways. So that's why they're also a part of this bond referendum. Excellent, thank you. Now let's talk about how to vote so that everyone knows how to vote in advance and on November 2nd. There's going to be a lot of ways to vote. The first thing you want to do is look for our question. So right in the middle of the ballot or off to the side of the ballot, depending on which of the eight towns you live in, you'll see a question. It's going to be boxed. Uh, there's a graphic right there, Lenape Regional High School District question. And there you'll see the details about um, how much each of the projects will cost in our schools and how much aid that the state is going to give us. Uh, this year, there are multiple ways for voters to vote. They, um, of course, have the mail-in ballot. Um, interestingly enough, on my mail-in ballot, I had to look for the question on the back of the ballot. So if you don't see the question on the front, look for it, it's somewhere on that ballot. In addition to mail-in ballot, they increased the number of days that you can do in-person voting. So now you can vote starting October 23rd at seven different locations throughout Burlington County. Anybody in Burlington County can go to any one of these locations from October 23rd all the way up to Halloween. And of course, you can go to your regular polling place that you go to every November election on November 2nd. Thank you, Dr. Birnbaum. That is a lot of detail about voting, but it's so important. And remember, your opinion won't count unless you submit a ballot. All details are on lrhsd.org slash vote, including an application form for a mail-in ballot, the times and locations for those special early voting polls, and a link to search for your polling place on November 2nd. As a reminder this evening, the public can submit questions for the panelists. Visit lrhsd.org slash form question. Also, this forum is being recorded so people can watch it later. A link to that recording will be on the referendum website. Now, before we get into specifics on the referendum, we wanna share a video that gives a good overview of what the Lenape Regional could do at all four high schools. It's about five minutes long, and then we'll explain how we can make these improvements with no change to the tax rates in any of our communities. We have a plan to modernize all our schools and property owners will incur zero, that's right, zero new taxes. On Tuesday, November 2nd, the Lenape Regional High School District will ask voters to consider a bond referendum. Only through this type of vote can we access more than $24 million in state aid to help pay for over one third of our capital project costs. Our plan calls for updating building exteriors and instructional spaces replacing HVAC systems and adding air conditioning, customizing classrooms to expand career-focused curriculum, and upgrading athletic facilities with LED lighting at all schools and turf fields at Lenape and Seneca. With voter approval of this tax-neutral bond proposal, we can tackle these projects and more with zero change to the tax rates in all Lenape district communities. We can keep the tax impact to zero largely because the projects in our bond referendum qualify for over $24 million in a special type of state aid. This is money we either use it or lose it. This special type of state aid is only available to us through a voter approved bond referendum. And it's a different pot of money than the money that we've seen continuously cut by the state through our school funding formula. That $24 million combined with old debt reaching its payoff point results in $67 million worth of improvements with zero change in tax rates. 
Proposed projects are considered must-haves for the district. They're on the district's long-range facilities plan, and many were also mentioned by community members during the 2018 strategic planning process. Students, staff, and visitors will appreciate seeing air conditioning on the project list. All four schools would get upgraded heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems, replacing some systems that are over 60 years old. Upgrading our HVAC systems will enable us to run more efficiently, to have better control, to temper air better, to have more air efficiency into our buildings, be overall more effective for the learning environment. It'll also save us a lot of money in the long run. We have systems that range from mid-50s to the 70s to the 90s. Newer equipment runs more efficiently. It requires less maintenance. Now's the time to do it. I mean, if we have the ability to get one third of that money back, it's a win-win. We have to prepare the kids for their AP tests. We have to get ready for end of the year assessments, progress assessments. And when they're distracted, when they're not paying attention, when they're feeling just drained and exhausted from the weather, it is hard for them to focus. Newer HVAC systems will also further improve comfort levels, student focus, and air filtration and flow. On hot and humid days, we typically see at least double the amount of kids with allergies, um, and sometimes even as much as four times the amount of asthmatic kids coming in complaining of asthma-related symptoms. Another set of projects in the referendum involves customizing classrooms and adding equipment for career-focused learning. Regardless of home high school, the LRHSD will open its expanded Career Pathway programs to any district student. We realize that not all of our students' career goals will require a college degree. And we aim to support those students and their training for high demand positions in our newly renovated educational spaces, as well as providing internship opportunities to provide hands-on experiences for those students. They're learning about framing, they're learning about trusses, they're learning about how to put in window casings, how to frame out doors. And the idea would be that they could take that knowledge right from the classroom, right into the workforce. The exteriors of our schools are also due for some maintenance, as are the athletic facilities. The bond proposal calls for turf fields at both Lenape and Seneca. This would create equity among the athletic facilities at all district high schools. And turf is the modern standard for high schools. Athletes who play on grass can be at a significant disadvantage during high school and at college. You never have to worry about it being overused. It's always ready to like, be able to play on. And we're really fortunate enough to have most of our games played on the turf. It's a lot nicer, and especially during night games under the lights, it's a lot more fun to play on. Cherokee athletes and fans, as well as community groups, will benefit from LED lighting upgrades at the stadium and a new press box where so much coaching and scouting takes place. The capital projects in our bond referendum directly support our specific plans to ensure the future of the Lenape Regional High School District. Even replacing aging systems such as water heaters are carefully timed out so that costs don't pile up. Part of that careful timing is to fund these projects through a voter approved bond referendum which gives us access to that special type of state aid, over $24 million to the Lenape Regional High School District, about one third of the cost of the entire project. This will ensure we can invest in the future of all of our schools in the Lenape Regional High School District. It's a plus for all homeowners and it has zero tax impact. To learn more about the proposal, follow LRHSD Vote on social media and visit lrhsd.org vote for additional details and voting information. The Lenape Regional High School District bond proposal will be on the general election ballot with mail-in voting starting in early October and in-person voting beginning October 23rd. The final date to cast a vote is Election Day, Tuesday, November 2nd. Well, that's some exciting news for the future of Lenape Regional. We'll get into more details about those projects in a few minutes. But first, let's learn how a bond referendum is part of a strategic approach to funding those upgrades. And for that, we turn to Mrs. Stort, the district's business administrator. Thank you, Mr. Webb. There are two financial elements that are falling into place that makes this the perfect time for us to update our schools. First is the ability to be eligible for state aid. And the second, 
is that some of our existing debt is being paid off. The state aid is revenue that is collected from across all of New Jersey, but it is only shared with school district that use a voter approved bond referendum to pay for capital improvements. We are constantly looking ahead for what the needs will be in the future for our schools. As an example, our current HVAC systems are getting too old to be efficient and they are not reliable. Along with the improvements on our long range facility plan, we package these projects into our bond referendum so that could result in receiving that special state aid. Without voter approval on the bond referendum, Lenape Regional will miss out on getting more than $24 million in state aid for our capital improvements. These projects must be done at some point in the future. So if not through an approved bond referendum, these projects will need to be paid for out of the general fund, which will not qualify for that state aid to offset the costs. Having a zero tax impact for debt service tax levy will continue the appropriate payments that have been paying for years. Yeah, I'd actually like to add something to that. You just mentioned that these projects, they're gonna to need to be completed anyway. And if, if that happens outside of a bond referendum, it's gonna come out of our general fund. And um, I think that everybody knows being a resident of Evesham, especially the K to eight school district and the regional high school district are uh, districts of 200 districts in New Jersey who have been seeing our state aid being cut for the last four years. And we'll see those cuts again, continuing through this pandemic and in the next two years, cumulatively, cumulatively, we're, cumulatively, we're losing over $20 million in state aid. So we are talking about state aid, but it's different. It's the state aid, the set, state sets aside for capital improvements. And that doesn't impact our general fund at all. So this is something that's completely different. In fact, our district looks for ways to find ways to save our taxpayers. We look for grants, we, we accept donations. This is another way trying to go for that $24 million through this bond referendum is another way to save our taxpayers and keeping it out of the general fund. Um, the way that I look at it is, you know, we are all paying as residents of this area into that pot of money that Trenton is collecting, and we see very little of it come back to us every year in state aid. This would be really nice to have the state give us $24 million, and we'll finally see some of that money coming back to this region. Yes, the state aid is a key factor in our ability to do these projects without raising the tax rate. The proposed projects are estimated to cost about $67 million and the state covering one third of those costs, $24 million helping, uh, helping hand from the state itself. The rest of the $43 million costs would be covered by the same tax rate that exists now. The district is nearly paying the, sorry, the district is nearing the payoff point for the current debt, which voters approved years ago. This approach uses a continuous tax rate to fund the continuous cost for maintaining our excellent schools. With the state aid and a steady tax rate, the bottom line is that we get $67 million worth of upgrades for a zero tax change. Thank you, Mrs. Stewart and Dr. Birnbaum. Now we have a few questions uh, related to finance. Um, so this first question is for you, Mrs. Stewart. Would the tax rate fall if voters reject the proposal? Um, one side, let me think. No, the tax rate will not fall. Um, this proposal is being made by the Lenape Regional High School District as we're finishing paying off a bond that voters authorized years ago. And the final payment is lower than it has been. The final $3 million coming off the debt tax is small in comparison to the tax rate for the Lenape Regional High School District general operations. Taxpayers may not even notice a difference between the 2021 and 2022. However, the must do items in the proposal will still have to be done. HVAC, roof replacements, restroom renovations, concrete restoration and other projects must be addressed to maintain our facilities. And the district 
<clears throat> excuse me, as, as a strong asset for the real estate market. Without voter approval, bond referendum, the must do projects will be funded 100% from the local taxpayers. Lenape Regional District loses the opportunity for more than 24 million in that specific type of state aid. Thank you, Mrs. Storr. Mrs. Storr, we have another question. Um, why don't the projects listed on the website have a cost assigned? I'm gonna defer that over to uh, Mr. Voro. Oh. I'm sorry, Mr. Webb, I'm sorry. Could you repeat that for me, please? Um, I'm not, I... <laughs> no problem, yeah, no problem whatsoever. Uh, the question was, why don't projects listed on the website have a cost assigned to them? One of the reasons why um, is that we don't want to turn around and allow all of the costs that we have estimated to go out there. And we would then be violating uh, our bidding laws uh, because we go out and want to get the lowest possible bid possible. And if we do present those costs that we're estimating, it, it would give an unfair advantage uh, to the contractors. Well, and it, it, you know, the bidding process for public school districts is designed for us to get the job done the way that we need it to be done, but also at the lowest cost. So it also saves our taxpayers money by us not advertising that we estimate that something's going to cost $100,000 when some a bid may have come in at $55,000, but if they know that we budgeted $100,000 for it, they're gonna drive that bid up. So, you know, it's very, it's a, it's a way of keeping the cost competitive for us to save money for our taxpayers. Thank you, Dr. Birnbaum and Mrs. Stewart. We have another question related to finance. If the project costs exceed the estimates, even exceeding the 10% set aside for contingencies, what are the priorities? Mr. Voro, can you take that one, please? Yeah, I sure can. So when we put something out to bid, we're very specific on what we want. The bid is very thorough and it's very exact to our expectations. So all the bidders that are bidding this job, or at least 99% of them, know what those expectations are. And in the end, we put a contingency in there, which is, is the amount of money that is set aside, say a guy opens up a wall and there's a pipe in a wall, well, those are unforeseen circumstances. We could take that contingency money and still continue with the project and not have to get board approval for a change order or anything like that. That money's already set aside. Now, knowing this, you know, we, we don't take a job, get halfway through it, and all of a sudden say, hey, you know what, we're not going to be able to air condition this space because it went over the budget. If it goes over budget, we do, we follow the process of um, getting a change order. We go to the board for approval. And it's it's always a fact that we'll we'll make an exception to 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 those monies and say, hey, you know, let's continue the project. Unless it's something that's truly out of the ordinary and we don't have the money, but it's never been that case in the 23 years I've been doing it. And there's often times where we get that contingency money back in a credit form to us. So we're very diligent and we have a lot of professionals working with us to make sure it's very thorough. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Mr. Voro. Uh, we have another finance question. The bond referendum asks for approval of $66 million and the projected state aid is assumed to be 24 million. Will bonds be issued for the total? If so, what is to be done with the extra 24 million raised by bonds or are bonds issued incrementally and state aid received incrementally? Why call this a $66 million bond referendum when only 42 is estimated to be needed? Mrs. Stewart, can you address that question, please? Mrs. Stewart, you're muted. I'm sorry about that. The bonds will be issued for the total of a little over $67 million. And after the sale of the bonds, a payment schedule is set up for the next 20 years, very similar to your uh, mortgage payment. And for the district to repay these bonds with principal and interest. With the schedule, 
we then send that over to the state of New Jersey and they give us one third of the principal and interest due uh, in each of the fiscal years. So the district can pay the total amount of principal interest in full each year, but we pay our share from the taxes that we collect from this uh, taxpayers and the state gives us their share of that 24 million over time to make the total payment. Thank you, Mr. Stork. And it looks like we have one more financial question at this time. The ballot includes wording about, quote, with respect to the finance, final eligible cost of the project, end quote. Can we be assured that all projects and their estimates have been deemed eligible by the state? Or are there any costs which are known to be not eligible? If not eligible, what are those costs and projects? Mrs. Stork? My pleasure again, Mr. Webb. Uh, all of the projects that we presented to the Department of Education were approved for state aid, and we received the final eligibility letters several months ago that gave us the projects that were and the ones that were not. All of the approved, all of the projects were approved except for our turf fields, the stadium lighting, and the press boxes. They were the only three items that were presented that were not eligible for state aid. And those projects are a total cost of approximately, uh, again, about $5 million out of the 67 million. Thank you, Mrs. Storr. These are great questions. Thank you, community members. Let's keep these questions coming. As a reminder, you can submit questions for the panelists by visiting lrhsd.org slash forum question. Also, this forum is being record recorded so people can watch it later, and a link to the recording will be on the referendum website. In the event we can't get to your question during our, our forum tonight, uh, we will absolutely respond by email. Now we're going to turn it over to Anthony Boro, our Director of Buildings and Grounds, to begin the discussion of projects we would fund through a bond referendum, starting with upgraded heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems at all four schools. Hello, everyone. So as everyone knows by now, the um, largest scope of the entire project district-wide is HVAC. So that was the most commonly asked request that we air condition our buildings, you know, through public forums and anyone else that comes into the buildings when it's hot. So um, um, among those projects, you know, we, we have to replace old heating systems that are in excess of 60 years old at one of our facilities. And our maintenance team, they, they do a wonderful job. Believe me, they, they, they take pride in what they do, but it just becomes not manageable to maintain systems that are that age any longer. I mean, we're saving parts um, because they don't make parts anymore. Eventually we're gonna run out of those parts and we're not gonna be able to buy parts. And everyone knows what happens when you don't have parts. You don't have systems. So um, we're upgrading our HVAC now. And, you know, with the upgrades to the heating and our ventilation system, now's the time to upgrade the air conditioning. So it, it all plays together. We can't do one without the other. So um, if if we decide that, you know, we, you know, we can't do air conditioning, we still need heat. And these systems, you know, they, they, operate the heating in the winter time and cooling in the summer. So if, if we can heat in the winter, there's no use cooling in the summer because we can't open. So we need to make sure that we're maintaining those systems, not just for the air conditioning, but for heating. And we're at the point where they all need to be upgraded. And now's the time to add it. I mean, we're adding air conditioning and it's costing us a third less um, with $24 million going towards you know, the, the, the cost to offset um, what we're all paying for this air conditioning, now's the time to do it. We're gonna get new climate control systems that we can adjust systems in real time. We don't have to manually go to units and do it, um, you know, physically do it. We don't have to physically check things all the time. We'll be able to check things via internet um, by a handheld device. Um, all these things help for a better learning environment. And it, now's the time to do it. Um, that's, that's the HVAC. 
Mr. Webb, if I could interject, as Dr. Birnbaum alluded to when we started and Mr. Voro just mentioned, our strategic plan, which we spent over a year doing, which was composed of students, community members, alumni, staff, the number one need in all four of the Lenape District schools was air conditioning. Our Lenape District schools are some of the biggest in Burlington County. Cherokee High School is the largest high school in Burlington County. We understand that this is a massive undertaking, but it's one that our students desperately need. And it's their voice that brought this to the forefront. They go grades K through eight in a climate controlled environment. Well, what happens to them in grades nine through 12? Do they suddenly no longer have asthma or COPD or the most common of chronic disease, allergies? Not typically. What do we do in schools? We spend our time engaging our students. And if you look at how climate change has impacted the school environment, September and several weeks in October, it's hot in schools. This week alone, we just got done doing PSAT testing. And how do we close out our school year? In April and May, when we're doing state mandate testing or advanced placement testing, and it is hot. Creating one less hurdle for our students to overcome is just so important to the educational environment. And the extracurricular environment, environment as far as air condition goes, is just a bonus. But I don't want to look or overlook the importance this is to our students as identified by our students. Outstanding. Thank you, Mrs. Charlesworth and Mr. Voro. Uh, we do have a few questions related to these projects. Question number one, and Mr. Voro, I believe you touched on this, but you know air conditioning is, is on a lot of, lot of uh, folks' minds with this, pro with this referendum. So will all of the rooms in all of the schools be air conditioned once the improvements have been implemented? Mr. Vora? Yes, the intention is all educational spaces will be air conditioning. That's what everyone asked for and that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do. Um, and that includes gyms. So um, there's educate, gyms are educational spaces. So um, there'll be, you know, we use those for different events and there are also educational spaces, so they'll be air conditioned as well. Thank you, Mr. Boro. Uh, question number two, why isn't the maintenance of these systems covered in the regular operating budget? Mrs. Stewart, you wanna take that one? I'm sorry, Mr. Webb, again, could you please repeat the question? No problem. Why isn't the maintenance of these systems covered in the regular operating budget? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I, I can I can start and then maybe you can add on. Um, they are budgeted in our regular operating budget. Um, like regular maintenance is something that we take uh, very important in our school districts. When you walk into our facilities, they, they look great. Our Maintenance crews do an excellent job of making sure everything is functioning. But let's remember, um, you know, these systems are, are, some of them are aging, 50 years old, 60 years old in some of our buildings. And part of the budget process is not only to budget for these during your regular annual budget, but also to plan them out when these big ticket items need to be replaced. We can plan them out as we see debt dropping off and go out for bond referendum and get the state to kick in a lot of the cost of it, not putting 100% on our taxpayers. When we put these items in our regular budget, then 100% of it falls on the backs of our taxpayers. But when we can have foresight and part of our long range planning is to say, okay, we know that we're gonna have debt fall off this year. So let's plan to replace those big items this year and go out for the state to pay for a third of it rather than getting our taxpayers to pay for 100% of it. That's correct. <clears throat> and, and we do do this and we monitor all of our uh, projects 
from now up until five and 10 years down the road, because again, we don't want this to fall on the taxpayers and we wanna be fiscal responsible to our taxpayers. That makes perfect sense. Thank you, Mr. Stort and Dr. Birnbaum. Um, we're also gonna ask Mr. Voro to talk a bit about the proposed projects in the referendum that will impact our athletic facilities. Sure. So um, a big part of the um, athletic upgrades are turf at Seneca and Lenape. Um, turf, let me just touch on the maintenance versus, you know, grass, um, grass maintenance. So grass maintenance, we have to cut it, we have to line it, we have to repair any divots, any sinkholes, anything like that to make it a safe playing surface. We have to fertilize it, we have to do pest control on it. You know, as everyone can see, you, you drive around, you see our, you know, our grass fields are, you know, the best around, but it takes a lot of work to do that. With turf, it's, it's not that much maintenance. It's, it's virtually maintenance free other than upkeep that you have to do every year to keep warranties and disinfecting things like that, that you have to do, but you can line it with five different sports. And, and the, the big, th the biggest thing is there is no downtime with turf. You can, you can have, you know, an inch of rain and you're going from one sport to another. With grass, you're not doing that. You have an inch of rain and you play a game on, on a grass field. You're not playing a game on that field anytime soon after that. But with turf, you can go from one sport to another and with no, with no time in between. It's not necessary. You come off the field, another team comes on the field. And we, we've done it with our teams, and we see outside groups, uh, the younger kids come in and use the turf, and then we get right back on it. So um, I know Mrs. Uh, Charlesworth can probably touch on the value of uh, turf at her place. Thanks, Tony. As we are all aware of, most of the high schools in the Olympic Conference have a turf surface. We always want our kids to be playing with that competitive edge. We're not a school district that typically accepts average. Why would we accept it here? And we know that as our sister schools, Cherokee and Shawnee, we often play Seneca and Lenape, if not once per season, twice per season. So that benefits all four schools in the Lenape Regional High School District, whether we're home or away, our surface is the most up-to-date, technologically advanced, and safest for our students. But also, let's talk a little bit about postseason play, which is the expectation of every sports team. The NJSIAA, which is the governing body of high school sports in New Jersey, actually requires this for sectional finals, state semifinals, and state finals in soccer and field hockey. And I believe they also require it in lacrosse, but I would have to fact check myself on that. But I don't wanna overlook the curricular impact either. RPE classes benefit tremendously. It could be raining one minute, kids love going outside, taking our students down to the track on the field where they're not walking through the building or ruining their sneakers because they're wet. Let's talk about our stellar music programs, one of which is our marching bands in all four schools. These students also deserve nothing less than a field that's constantly lined so their performance could be as precise as their directors want them to be. Also, let's not overlook our cheerleaders who spend a lot of time in tumbling and stunting classes. It's a lot safer surface, one that is flat and that you know is flat. There aren't divots or holes as kids begin to tumble or stunt. I also wanna say that in having the turf, it allows our grass fields, which are beautifully maintained, but turf allows those grass fields not to be overused. Thank you, Mrs. Charlesworth and Mr. Boro. Uh, we, have, we do have a question. Um, what are the press boxes used for? So I could touch on that a little bit. As I've been, as I've been preparing for um, 
you know, the upgrades and what we need to do as far as press boxes and replacements and or, you know, upgrades to existing press boxes. Uh, I've asked a lot of questions about what they expect and what each school expects. And, and a lot of these press boxes, you know, it's, it's not just about, you know, coaches sitting up in there. It's, it's officials that have to go up there. It's visiting team coaches that have to go up there and they observe the, the field from, you know, a higher vantage point, but we also use them for our students, our, our students that work for LDTV go up there and they, you know, they can film games from there. So it, it's, it's used by the students as well. And in some of these press boxes, mainly Cherokees, which is probably the smallest one in the district, um, it doesn't, it doesn't have the space for the students. And if it's packed in there, you know, it, the, the officials and the, the really essential people that need to be there, it, you know, the students don't have the space to be there. So, you know, it's going to, it's going to help that too. But um, I don't know if Donna has any, any, um, any thoughts on the press box, but um, that that's pretty much what it's used for. Well, Tony, of course, Donna always has thoughts over a press box, uh, especially ours. If you'd indulge me for a moment while I create the atmosphere, that the William H. Holt Stadium is one of the best in South Jersey, if not one of the best in the state. To see a game in that stadium, when the beat of the drum is leading our kids down the hill, when the sun is setting, and our athletes and spectators are excited for what they're gonna see. And you look back at the big sign that says William H Stadium, and there are times that I just wanna scratch my head and say, when is this gonna get up to par? When is this gonna be 21st century? We have a lot of games that are called from the view of that press box. We have a lot of filming that takes place up there as well as it gives the coaches and a lot of times recruiters a total view of the stadium. And quite honestly, the one at Cherokee needs improvement. And I think that we all know that. Tony, I also wanna to touch on the benefit of the LED lighting. That lighting allows for such clarity that whether you're an athlete on the field or a spectator watching our students perform, it gives you a totally different perspective than our outdated lighting, which can, which can often look brown or yellow. So there are improvements to the William H. Fult Stadium that Cherokee High School students and staff are very, very excited about and look forward to. Thank you for that insight, Mrs. Charlesworth and Mr. Boro. So as we mentioned earlier, we went through a strategic planning process in 2018. And this helped us gather input from many stakeholders across our district, including more than 1,000 community members. This helped us set future goals for the district. One thing that consistently came up was the need for enhanced career-focused programming to support the interests and ambitions of all Lenape Regional students. Our Director of Curriculum and Instruction, Mrs. Heather Zanakis, will now discuss how our bond proposal includes funding for in-district career pathway programs. Good evening, everyone. We have been focusing in the Lenape Regional High School District on two graduations for a long time. The first graduation is from high school and the second graduation we anticipate is from college. And we want to ensure that this initiative also provides opportunities for students who won't require a college education to reach their career goals. And so our goal uh, regarding the career pathways is to strengthen what we already have in our programs and then build upon that with industry standard equipment, updating our rooms and forging partnerships with local businesses and community members to allow students to have hands-on um, experiences and a broad range of interests and abilities. Whatever they're interested in, we want to help them pursue what they're interested in. So we know that there is a job availability right now, like there hasn't been in a long time. 
And so we want to prepare our students to go right into the workforce if they're interested. So what we're doing is we're drilling down um, in individual schools and students from all of the Lenape Regional High School District are able to choose if they so wish a career pathway. And at Cherokee High School specifically, we're going to enhance the carpentry program. Um, there's woodworking, it's very popular at Cherokee as well as our other schools. But what we're gonna do here specifically is build on that and allow students real world experiences and have people come in and have students go out and actually learn the craft of carpentry. So we're excited about that. Um, at Seneca High School, there will be an automotive program, which they already have. And again, we're enhancing that. We're gonna build upon that and let students have um, deeper experiences there. And then at Lenape High School, there will be a, uh, a welding and metal fabrication shop. Um, so those are just three of the different pathways that have been identified. And again, students from anywhere in the LRG HSD are able to take advantage of that. And just I, I just want to point out as, as we're having this, you know, this dialogue about the career pathways is that there, there are massive shortages in the nation right now. Um, there's a study that says over 642,000 diesel and collision techs will be needed by 2024. That's one study that was done. Um, welding, there's a deficit, there will be a deficit of over 400,000 by the year 2024, and so on and so forth. And so what we want to do is we want to prepare our students. So if that, their desire and their interests lie um, to gain, uh, you know, employment right out of high school, we want to prepare them to do that, whether it be with a certification or just experiences or partnerships that they have built throughout their uh, four years in our district. Thank you, and if Mrs. I could interject one final time. Absolutely, please. Um, I'm really proud of this because this is one of the initiatives that came from our students. They said, we do a good job of preparing them for two and four year colleges. But what about our friends that that's not the direction they're going? Or what about us? It, we might not pick a career there, but we would certainly like the skill set. And as Ms. Anaka stated, woodworking is one of the most popular electives at Cherokee. Creating a carpentry course for our students who want to take it a step further. What a great opportunity. But in taking it a step further, it also helps make things better for my home improvement elective or my car care elective. So. These academic elective areas are really giving our, skill, our kids skills they need if they want to establish a career or just skills that they like something hands-on. They like the break from the academics. And this is an opportunity to allow them to learn those skills with industry standard expectations. Our kids have used those materials. And quite honestly, we do it in other areas. We do it in music. We do it in photo. What a great opportunity to do it in our other electives. Well said, Mrs. Charlesworth, thank you. Uh, we do have one question uh, related to career pathways. Doesn't the county run vocational high school, BCIT, have space for auto and carpentry instruction? Mrs. Anakis, can you take that one, please? I can, absolutely. So the answer is yes, they do. And so if the question is why come to the LRHSD instead of go to those one of those other programs or schools, the answer is simple. Coming to the LRHSD gives you all of the other opportunities as well as those career pathways. So let's say the student is interested in the carpentry pathway but yet going to Cherokee High School, they would be able to experience all of the other diverse course offerings that, that we have to offer, all of the other clubs, all of the other sports. So they also, on, on top of 
they get both, then they can go to school with their friends. Maybe that's who they went to school with their whole career so far, and they would like to continue on, but they're interested in a specific pathway. So my, my answer to that question would be they get the, be both, the best of both worlds by uh, staying in the LRHSD and experiencing the career pathway that we have for them. Thank you, Mrs. Anakis. Upgraded HVAC systems and athletic facilities and the expansion of career pathway programs are among the most significant projects in the Lenape Regional Bond Referendum. But the full list also includes many projects to update interior and exterior appearances for both improved efficiency and learning experiences for our students. Mr. Voro can briefly cover some of these additional projects. Yeah, I'll be brief. What you should expect um, almost immediately when you go into the schools, you're going to see upgraded LED lighting throughout the entire facilities. You're going to see them in classrooms, hallways, everywhere. You know, you have lights, they're going to be LED lighting. Um, you're going to see um, upgraded classrooms as far as, uh, you know, painting and other things like that. You're going to see you're going to see upgraded labs in some of the schools. You're going to see at Cherokee. You're going to see brickwork on the exterior, the exposed concrete. You're going to see repairs that need to be done on those items to make that building last another 30 years. You're going to see plumbing, electrical upgrades in there because we're going into the further into the computer age, and you know we need cleaner power into our buildings, and uh, we're going to upgrade those. You're going to see some repairing in the parking lots outside crack filling, spray coating, things like that. So um, look forward to it. It's going to be exciting. Thank you, Mr. Voro. Now we have some, um, time for some additional questions about the bond referendum on November 2nd. If you haven't sent a question in yet, uh, you can do that now. We'll do our best to get to your question before wrapping up this forum at six o'clock. And if we don't get to your question tonight, uh, we'll certainly answer your question by email. As a reminder, to submit a question, visit lrhsd.org slash forum question. Also, this forum is being recorded so people can watch it later. And a link to the recording will be on the referendum website. Okay, looks like we have a question. Why not ask for more and make improvements since the projected tax impact is zero? We get that question a lot um, from our uh, enthusiastic committee members. Um, you know, we're really excited to be able to offer all these improvements at zero tax increase. Um, we're very sensitive to COVID, right? Has impacted families in many different ways in our communities. And the last thing we wanna do is put any more burden on our taxpayers. So. Uh, you know, we have these projects, they have to be aligned to our long range facilities plan. They are also responsive to what our community has told us through a strategic planning process, but also we want to be sensitive and not not go over more when when we heard that the state was going to cover up to a third, we were really excited. Um, but not not overly excited to be, you know, indulgent, we, we want to get what we need and what our community wants and keep it flat. Thank you, Dr. Birnbaum. And thank you everyone for taking the time this evening to learn about the Lenape Regional's bond referendum before casting your vote in the November 2nd general election. We know the interest and involvement in our community shows in the LRHSD and it makes us even stronger. If you have additional questions, you may find your answer on lrhsd.org slash vote website. Also follow our LRHSD vote on social media and finally, you can email questions to vote at lrhsd.org. Your opinion won't count unless you submit a ballot. All details are on the website, including an application form for a mail-in ballot, the times and locations for those special early voting polls, and a link to search for your polling place on November 2nd. Thank you to the panelists and the public who tuned in tonight. As we have said, a link to the recording will be on the referendum website. Good night, everyone.